Hi Youtubers, I am Javier Rini and as promised, this is a video of me priming and bottling the Summer Red IPA we brewed in the first episode. It's been 14 days now, a little more than expected in comparison to the first batch I brewed and fermentation is now over, so it's time to move on and bottle it. Priming and bottling, what is that? Well, bottling, it's pretty much self-explanatory. It's transferring the beer from the fermenter to bottles. And priming is the addition of fermentables, normally sugar, to your beer. And why do you want to do that? Well, now that the beer is fermented, it has developed its definitive body, aroma, and taste. But it doesn't have bubbles in it. It won't have any foam or head when you pour it. So, in order to develop those characteristics, you need to develop carbonation. And how do you do that? Well, it's pretty easy. Actually, when it's fermenting, yeast is already producing carbon dioxide. The thing is that it's escaping through the airlock. Now, if you bottle your beer and you cap it, carbon dioxide cannot go out, so it goes back into the beer. And this is why when you open a beer, you hear that characteristic sound, and when you pour it, it has bubbles on it, and it has foam. So there are two main ways of priming your beer. One is with the use of carbonation drops. They look like little pieces of candy. You just pop them in your bottles and that's it. And the other one, which is the one we're gonna use, is dissolving sugar in boiling water. Adding it to the beer and then bottling the beer once it's all mixed up. I prefer this method because it's more uniform. Now the amount of sugar to be used to prime your beer will depend on the style of beer that you're brewing. A tool that I would recommend is northernbrewer.com. They have a priming calculator. So you just have to select the style of the beer you're brewing, the temperature and the amount of gallons of your batch. And it gives you the amount of fermentables that you need to add for priming. Not only sugar, but a list of fermentables, which is, by the way, interesting to look because there is a lot of things that you can use to prime your beer. So, without further ado, let's go and prime and bottle our beer. Okay, so here we are in the kitchen with our lovely red IPA ready to be primed and bottled. Let me get you closer so that I can show you the equipment we will use for that. Okay, so first off, a siphon. This one has got a little accessory here for it not to suck the yeast. And a ball. You don't need this. If you only have a pipe, then that's, that's enough. I'll be using a fermentation vessel. And you may ask yourselves why. Well, it's simple. It's because this thing here allows me to attach this. This is called a little butler or magic wand. It has some several names. Basically what you do is you attach it here and it's got this little thing here that regulates and dispenses beer. Let me show you more or less how it works. This is your bottle. So you put it there, you fill it and when you want it to stop you just take off your bottle. That really makes life easier. Now two quick comments. Before transferring the beer to the fermenter. I previously sanitized it. You can still see some foam there. I filled it halfway with water and sanitizer and I also put the bottles on it so I have got everything sanitized. Also before transferring the beer to the fermenter I'll take a small sample to take a final gravity rating. Finally, as it's going to be a little hard to siphon the beer through this tiny hole, what I'll do is, with a pair of sanitized scissors, I'll cut this off and I will take off the hops with a strainer. I'll be right back. Alright, so sanitized scissors and here we go. I'm trying not to move it too much so that the yeast remains in place. Okay. And now, with a sanitized strainer, I'll take this out. I'm making a huge emphasis on sterilization now because now it is critical. We have worked a lot so it makes no sense in risking it all at the last minute. The smell is amazing. It smells really beautiful. Okay, so most of the hops are out now. Those that remain there won't be sucked through the siphon. Now, the best way for siphoning this is not to suck 
through the pipe. Not only that's disgusting, there's a risk you, you, you'll spoil your beer. The best way is to fill this with water and then you let it run and it will naturally suck the beer. I'll be right back and show you how it's done. Okay, so now I've got this pipe filled with water. I'll place this into the beer, trying not to touch the bottom. And now I'll just have to open this and it will naturally suck the beer out. You see, there it is. So now I just got it and we're done. So I'll just take this for the gravity reading and then I'll transfer the rest of it to the fermenter. So let's take that gravity reading. Oops, I'll take some of it out. I actually took a sip and the taste is beautiful. All right, now it's a moment of truth and the reading is 1014. Probably I can zoom it for you. There's no way that I can make it clearer. But it's 1014. So according to brewersfriend.com, Taking into account that the original gravity was 1071, as you may remember, and the final gravity is 1014, our summer red IPA is 7.48 ABV. That's what I consider a strong ale. Now let's prime it. So here I've got my priming solution. This is boiling now. It's 100 milliliters of water with 20 grams of table sugar following the indications and proportions of northernbrewer.com which I would recommend you to use when priming your beer. Since we have beer here in the pipe the siphoning process will be automatic. Let me put the camera in a better angle for you to see. So there we go. You want to try to avoid as much as you can the contact with oxygen. And you can see it's pretty quick. Now as we are approaching the end of it, this is when you have to be careful not to suck any yeast. It's not a big deal if you suck a little bit of it, but you want to try to avoid as much as you can. And I guess we're done now. So now we place this in a comfortable place. We attach the little bottler and then we start bottling. Now you place the bottle and it starts suspensing beer. You want to fill it to the top. And here it is, our first bottled beer of the channel. Now I'll do the same thing over and over again until we're done. So after bottling, this is what we've got. Five bottles of 500 milliliters and one of, I think it's 333, 330. It's a little less than I expected. I think it's because of the samples I took for the original and final gravity readings. And by the way, uh, please apologize for not removing the label of this tiny bottle. But that's a nice lager if you want to try it. Now let's put the caps on. So here we have the caps and as you may imagine, we have to sanitize them. And you really have to be extremely cautious, especially now. And here we have our bottle capper. It's really simple to use. It's got sort of a magnet there that it holds the cap in place. So now all we have to do is put it on top of the bottle, lower its arms, and boom. First bottled beer of the channel. Cheers. 
Okay, so this is the first production from start to end in this channel. It's been a pleasure for me doing that. And some may say, is it worth to take all this work for such a tiny production? Well, yes. Personally, I enjoy it a lot doing this and showing you guys how easy it is. Uh, if you're a beer lover and you're a DIY lover, then this is something you really gotta try. Uh, regarding the amount of the production, yes, well, it's not a huge production. But the advantage is that if you do this on a regular basis, week after week as I'm doing, you'll end up with a huge variety of beer. So guys, if you like what you see, thumbs up, like, and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Cheers and beers!